good, Father, and your mercy endures forever <coughs> and ever and ever. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We just love you and thank you for this day. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your hand upon us. Thank you for your spirit leading and guidance. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just glorify you. We just magnify you. We just honor you today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And praise your holy and mighty name. Oh, you're so worthy. Oh, you're so glorious. Oh, you're so mighty. You're so wondrous, Father. Oh, Father, you are El Shaddai. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Glorify you. Magnify you. Honor you, Father. Oh, yes. you're so good. Oh, you're so worthy, Father. We thank you, Father. Oh, you inhabit the praises of your people, Father, tonight. And in your presence is fullness of joy. We know the Holy Ghost is already here, Father, in a great, great measure. In a great measure, he's going to increase, Father. Your presence will increase, Father, as we obey you, but you're here now. You're present now, ever present, but present now in this place in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to lead you, and I'm going to guide you, and I'm going to direct you, and I'm going to show you to show you the way for tonight. In this service, it's going to be different. You can sense it's already different. It's different. It's different than the other services, the other prayer services. It's the same Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Ghost. But there's a burden tonight. There's a heaviness tonight. A very, very strong heaviness. I know it's upon me. It's upon me. It's upon me right now, Father. I know it's upon me, but there's a heaviness and there's a burden. And it's a burden that some have known, but others have not known. Others have not known. It's a burden. Oh, and you'll pray. Oh, and you'll seek my face. Oh, and you'll intercede. Oh, and some will even groan and groan and groan. And it'll be by my spirit, saith the Lord. For the burden that is here is a burden that many have not known. But much of what you'll be praying for even in this night in the prayer of intercession is you'll be praying for those that are lost, those that are hurting, those that are dying, those that are on the way to hell. And this burden that you sense, and this burden that you'll know before you leave here tonight, yes, the burden will turn into a load of victory before you leave, is the purpose of this prayer. But very often when praying for the lost, I allow you to be burdened by my spirit. I allow you to sense that loss and that despair. For see, my people have lost a care that they need to have. There's a care that they must care. Yes, there's a casting your cares upon me, saith the Lord, with no worry, no anxiety, and no burdens in the sense of being weighed down with life. But you must care for the lost. You must care that others are dying and going to hell. My church must be a soul, soul winning church, a soul winning people. Yes. And I'm calling you back to those things this night. For not only will this night will you pray the prayer of intercession, but even each and every month and on a regular basis from this day forth, I'm calling you aside all oh, to pray so I can lead you, so I can guide you. So I can show you the way. Aha, subrande la neme esike enembre osta. Ishe branege de lombrastike. You remember in my word, Jesus himself said, You, you people have made my temple a den of thieves. But I've called my house to be a house of prayer. I've called my house to be a house of prayer. So at this time, in this night, even as you get into my word, you're going to sense and know a burden and even a sense of despair that some in prayer have touched and known, but others have not known. 
this burden to pray, this weight, if you would call it that, this sense of despair, I'm allowing you to sense what many know each and every second of their lives every day. Many that are not part of my body, but it's my will that none should perish, but have everlasting life. So as you set forth to pray now, of course, it takes prayer and preaching together. And then the Holy Ghost convicting to save the lost. But as you do your part and you step out even this night, yes, there's a burden. Yes, the burden will even increase as you begin to intercede on behalf of your nation, your country, your county, your city, your family, and the lost and dying of this world. But as you will see from my word in just a few moments, as you step out by faith and obey those things that you've both seen and heard, you're going to see and know a note of victory before you leave this place that many have never known and some have not known in many days. But as you come back and begin again to attain to spiritual things, you're going to see that I'm going to lead you and guide you and show you the way and my presence will be there. It will increase. My glory will be there. It will increase. My anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage that is present now is going to increase. And the outpouring of my spirit, yes, it is for enjoyment for you to be in my presence, but its primary purpose is to accomplish my will and my plan in this earth before my church is called home to me. So it is a time to get serious, and you are doing so. It's a time to listen and obey. You're doing so, and you're going to move out, and you're going to go in many. Yes, in a degree, everyone will sense this, this night, this burden to pray, this burden for the lost. But it will not leave, even though you will have a note of victory, it will not leave when you leave this place. For this is something that you need. It is something that is necessary, even in your individual prayer lives as you pray for your family, as you pray for your friends, as you pray for those in the community that do not know me, saith the Lord. I'm going to use you to build my kingdom, to build my body, to bring the lost in. And as you yield and obey, you'll see. I'll give you the word to speak. I'll give you the direction. I'll show you the way. And not only you, but many others that come to know me will be able to give me the glory each and every day, saith the Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you that we are grateful for your, or your direction. We're grateful for your instruction. We're grateful for your correction. Father, we know you're not looking for anybody in any less serious than it has been in your body, in the church. You're looking for people that understand. This is serious business. As Jesus said, I must be about my Father's business tonight. We must be about the Father's business. We realize at this moment people are dying and going to hell, Father. You're looking for man. You're looking for woman. You're looking for somebody to hedge and stand the gap in their stead to be an intercessor, to plead their case, on, to plead on our behalf, on their behalf. Just as Jesus at this moment is seated at the right hand of the Father ever living to make intercession for us. We have a responsibility. Lead and guide us and show us the way. And we thank you we're going to follow and obey. And we thank you, Father, before we leave this place, tonight we'll have a note of victory. And we're going to see lives changed, challenged, and honor forever. Your glory built. Your kingdom built to your glory. We give you that praise, glory, and honor for it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated for a few minutes before we come back together to pray. Thank God for his word. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for all He's saying, all He's doing. We want to take heed to Him. God knows best. Amen. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. Go to Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 22 is going to be kind of our key scripture to kick off tonight. And as I said earlier, it is true that we have, uh, without a doubt, we have uh, touched on this in some of these other prayers as we've been led by the Spirit. But it doesn't matter. This is what the Lord led us to do. And, and we're going to move into it tonight. And I haven't given you the, the word on it. So we're going to talk about the prayer of intercession for a few minutes before we pray that way. Ezekiel 22, verse 30 and 31. We all can look around. We all can see the evil in the world, right? We all know the Bible says that it'll wax worse and worse. We can see that. Uh, that's not really a great 
you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that. We can all see that many are lost. We can all see there are so many that proudly reject God. No shame about it, right? And, and then my question would be, or God's to us, is what are we to do? You know, and of course, we're going to go to God's Word for our answer, right? Amen. Most Christians, I wrote these things down today as I was praying, got them by the Spirit. Most Christians and many ministers believe the answer to the problem of evil in this world is to stand, holler, and scream about how bad everybody is and how much the world's full of the devil and they're all going to hell. That is not the answer. We will not change this world that way. You will never have anybody come to this church and just say it would be me. Somebody will come to this church and they say, I just want to give this testimony. Pastor Jason met me on the street. He told me how no good of nothing, how much of a low life I was. I was full of the devil. I was a failure and a misery to my whole family. And I'm going straight to hell when I die. And that just touched my heart forever. And now I'm glad that I gave my heart to God because he thought I was a zero. That is not how you win anybody. Many people are caught up in this stuff. You'll never see me ever, never have, never will see me in this church or see me behind a social media, a computer screen, hollering and attacking people. That is not what we're called to do and it is not how we're going to change this world. And nobody is called to do that, not even a minister. Now there's a lot of times I don't say things about things, but when it's time we say it. That's not what we do. We are to be praying for people. And then we, yes, we preach the uncompromised gospel, right? But it is the Romans chapter 2 verse 4, the latter part. It is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. Yes. People that don't know God, they already know they got a hole in the heart. That everything they sought after cannot fill. They need somebody to pray for them. And they need somebody to tell them Jesus can fill that hole. He can quench that thirst. Amen. Amen. He can fill that hunger that no other man, no woman, nobody can. That's what they need. Yes. No matter how many people like the other approach, it doesn't work. I'm not going to compromise the gospel. The reality is we need to stay with the gospel. Amen? Yes. As we're going to see, God's answer to the lost, dying, and yes, even the evil in this world is twofold. And it is to number one, pray, and secondly, preach. Right? Yes, amen. And we're going to give you scripture to back it up, but in Ezekiel chapter 22 to begin with, it's who we are tonight, it's what we're doing, it's our purpose for being here, this particular night anyways. Ezekiel 22 verse 30, he said, I sought for a man among them. You know, God's seeking for a man or a woman among them tonight that should make up the hedge, that should do what? Should stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. I want to be able to decree and declare not only as Pastor Jason Wallace, but as R RLC, <laughs> Resurrection Life Church, that God has found some people that will hedge the gap, that will pray on behalf of the lost and dying of this world. You say, well, all of these are going to hell. Many may choose to go to hell, but we are, have a responsibility to be the vessels to save as many as possible before we leave out of here. Amen. Think about when you was on the way to hell. Aren't you glad somebody cared enough to pray for you? Yeah, they didn't compromise. They had to tell you the truth or you never got saved. We're not talking about compromising the truth, but they had to love you enough to pray for you. Love you enough to tell you the truth. Love you enough not to give up on you when you've given up on yourself. Amen? That's what the church is all about. It is. He said, but I found none. 31 says, therefore, have I poured out my indignation upon them. I've consumed them with the fire of wrath. Their own ways have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord. But he said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. I want you to go back to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Many of you guys know this. Uh, you, you've heard it all your life about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? God is looking tonight, we're going to go to Genesis 18, starting in verse 16 from the screen up here. In your Bibles as well, go into it in your word. God's looking for men and women who love Him and love people enough to seek Him on their behalf. And many would say, well, you let this one go and that one go the other way. People that want to go their own way, they're going to go their own way. I can't do anything about that. Amen. But there are people that need Jesus and actually want Him. Amen? And we have a responsibility to God for them. Right? It seems very hard sometimes for people, the church, to understand, but God gets His work done in this earth through us. Men and women of God yielded to the Spirit of God. 
obedient to the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Intercessory prayer. I'm about to read this, but intercessory prayer, the prayer of intercession we're talking about tonight, it is not praying for you. Right? You're not praying for God to do anything for you. You're at, and I just wrote this down to make it clear. An intercessor is one who takes the place of another, standing in their stead. We're going to read this example, two examples. Genesis 18, verse 16. We're going to see Abraham, the father of many nations. We're going to see him interceding for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to see that even back here in the Old Testament. Now we got this lies in the church. It's nothing but religious ignorance that says whatever will be will be. And nobody can change anything. If you read your Bible, you'll find out God's looking for men and women to act on the word of God so things can be changed in this earth. That's not true. God can use you to turn this world upside down. If you we'll begin to act on the word of God. Amen. And believe it's true. You won't act on it if you don't believe it's true anyways. But, but Genesis 18 verse 16. The men rose up from thence. Looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them. To bring them on the way. And the Lord said. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? That's powerful. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him. That he will command his children. Oh, you need to have these marked. And his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Because their sin is very grievous. Their sin was terrible, right? I will, come down, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it. Which is come unto me. And if not, I will know it. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. You got Abraham there standing before the Lord. God said, I know that man. I know Abraham. I know his life. Oh, as you stand up and make decisions. You say, well, everybody else isn't doing it. You make the decision that you are going to serve God and follow God. And God is going to use you to do and accomplish things you never thought, dreamed, or imagined. But lives are going to be changed because your dedication, your commitment, your willingness to die so that He can live. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about the flesh. Bringing the flesh into subjection, not you physically dying. But Abraham, verse 23, drew near. And he said, this is Abraham praying. This is Abraham talking to God on behalf of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? Verse 25, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. You wouldn't do that, Lord, what Abraham said. And the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said in response to Abraham, He said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, I will spare all the place for their sakes. Why did He say that He would do that? Abraham prayed. On behalf of these people, right? 27, Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which in but dust and ashes comes completely in humility for adventure. 28, there shall lack five of the 50 righteous. 45, will not destroy all the city for lack of five. And he said, If I find there 40 and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. He said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall be, shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Is God listening to Abraham? Yeah, yeah. And we believe we can't change anything. We can't do anything. I've had people to say, not, I mean, not recently, but it doesn't matter if recently or not, say, well, this marriage is a God-forsaken place. Not as long as we're here. Amen. Not as long as any child of God here, yellow, black, or white. Amen. But it, God, this is not a God-forsaken place. God is doing things, and He's moving just because we're here. Right. Just because we believe God. Just because we prayed and saw His face. And are about to in a few minutes again. He said, Behold, now I have, verse 31, taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, peradventure there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. 
And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. And the Lord went his way, and as soon as he had as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. So Abraham is interceding. He's talking to God. He's not talking to God for himself. He's talking to God for those, those righteous in the city, right? He's praying on their behalf uh, in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is what we're to be doing. You say, well, all, they all go in the hell in a handbasket. Well, that's just a cop out. I mean, that's a given. That's like saying the, that door's white. I mean, that's, 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 that's accomplishing nothing. We've been placed here to make a difference, right? Yeah. Go to Numbers chapter 14 was my other example. Numbers 14, we're going to back up to verse 13. Numbers 14. <clears throat> verse 13, we're going to see Moses, just like Abraham, but Moses interceding for Israel. Now we know if we take it further, Abraham needed to go down further in number than he went. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is that God listened to Abraham. And he said, if I find this many righteous at your request, I will not destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Amen. Uh, Numbers chapter 14. Starting in verse 13. Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it. For thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people. That thou, Lord, art seen face to face. And that the cloud standeth over them. And that thou goest before them by day in a pillar of a cloud. And in a pillar of fire by night. That's how God was leading the children of Israel around at the time. Now, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak saved. Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them. Therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. Now this is Moses talking to God like Abraham talked to God. And my God, we're in the New Testament. We got a better covenant based Amen. upon better promises. Amen. We can go boldly today, tonight, to the throne of grace to obtain all the grace, all the mercy, all the help. People sometimes are crawling. Because of Jesus, you can go boldly. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Verse 17, look at Moses here. And now, we'll look at this more in a second, but he said, And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great. According as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering, of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children into the third and fourth generation. He's recognizing God is God. <laughs> Amen. And he said in verse 19, he said, Pardon. We see these words again. He said, Pardon, I beseech thee. Again, it's Moses praying for himself. No, he's praying for the wayward, doubting, unbelieving children of Israel. Rebellious, yeah. right? He said, pardon, I beseech. How many of y'all, if somebody hadn't prayed for you when you lived for the devil, you might be dead. Yes, Amen? we got to be honest. Some of us, we don't want to live in the past. We don't need to. It's washed in the blood. But don't you forget where you come from, Amen. where God brought you from. And just like today, God needs us praying for others. There was a day he needed others praying for you yes, right. and for me. I wouldn't be standing here preaching today. Amen? So, he said, Pardon, I beseech thee the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. And the Lord said, this is powerful. We're going to pray tonight. Things are going to change tonight in the Spirit. And then we're going to see things, of course, if takes place, everything takes place in the spirit first, and then we'll see the outworking. You have to have an inworking first before you have an outworking in anything. Amen. Just like you have to have a death, it's unpopular, but you have to have a death before there's a resurrection. Right. right? Verse 20. And the Lord said, this is what the Lord said to Moses now, is he's interceding and pleading on behalf of the children of Israel. He said, I have pardoned, I have done this, why? Because I said it. I'm God. There's nothing you can do about it. Don't care what you think or nobody else. I'm going to wipe them all out. He said, I have pardoned according to thy word. He said, I have heard your prayer. 
right? Mm -hmm. But as truly as but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, right? Yeah. So he's appealing to God. We saw that in 17 through 19 on God's goodness, his mercy, his greatness, and his word. We are not making God do anything he wants to anyways. Yes. We are praying out the will of God. He said, I'm not willing that any should perish. He wants everybody to be saved. Yes. People reject Jesus, and that's the only reason that people are going to hell because they reject him. He's available to everybody. And we cannot make anybody do anything. We understand that. I try to tell people regularly. But we can pray. I can pray for somebody. And God will deal with their heart on my behalf. Yeah. Because I pray. Because I sent that supply of the Spirit. I know they have to respond. I understand that. I know they have a part to play. But I can't do their part. That's right. But they can't do mine. That's right. And you can't do mine. But together, we can do our part. We can fulfill our responsibility. Amen. We're getting back to be in a house of prayer. Matter of fact, and I'm saying very little because I've got to have a staff meeting to cover things first. It's only proper and right. But we've got two more weeks of prayer, I believe. Supposed to. And yeah, what's next week? The prayer of faith. And then we'll pray. The, the next week is supposed to be a prayer of worship. We're going to pray and have a worship service. What are we going to ask God for? Nothing. We'll cover those things by faith next week. But the next week, we're going to worship God and just enjoy His presence. But we're going to start out the first uh, Wednesday of every month, the first midweek service. We're going to have a prayer service. And the Lord said it's going to be really two primary prayers. One of them is going to be the prayer of faith. And the other one is going to be this one, the prayer of intercession. We had a couple of the things here in our family and such and the church and blessings. Everybody's thriving, fruitful, flourishing and growing. But it's not just about us. We pray at our chandra as well. Yeah. So we're going to do both. That's going to be the two time primary prayers that we pray is the prayer of faith, which we'll cover next week, and the prayer of intercession that we're covering tonight. Amen. So we're going to follow God, and there's much more that the Lord has instructed us to do. But as I said, uh, I've got some things we're putting together. We're going to have a staff meeting, and then we're going to, these things will come out in the services, in the calendar and such. But we are, we're going to be a house of prayer. We're going to be a people of prayer. Amen. We're going to step on over into what God's called us to. We're not endeavoring to fit in. We're not endeavoring to conform to the world or even other churches or ministry. We're endeavoring to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. yes. But he said a couple times there, he said, I beseech thee. Then he said, in 19, pardon, I beseech thee. And then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. So did his prayer on behalf of Israel make any difference? Could he just sat back and said, you bunch of dummies, doubters, unbelievers, my God, he's done, you done been through Exodus. He's done brought you out, promised you the land that flows with milk and honey, but you ain't got enough sense. Right? You don't have enough sense to listen. You bunch of miserable failures, no good for nothing. All of you's going to hell. You're going to drown in the Red Sea. All this stuff's going to happen to you. What would that have benefited? None. None. Amen? None. You say, where do you get your instruction from? That's just your viewpoint. Well, your viewpoint's wrong, so is mine if it doesn't come from the Word. We don't determine right and wrong by who thinks it. We determine right and wrong whether it's in line with the word or not. Amen. Amen. So his prayer made a difference. If his prayer made a difference, will our prayer make any difference on behalf of maybe our wayward children? Oh, yeah. Maybe a wayward spouse or somebody that a spouse that does not know God. You can pray and God will move on your behalf. Yes. yes. Will our prayers be able to make a difference in the lost and dying of this world? Can our prayers, and we're going to pray again tonight, can our prayers bring any supply, bring any change to bring this country back to being one nation under God? Yes. And many would say, I can read the Bible and see that in the last days it's going to wax worse and worse. You can also read the Bible and see that we are called the hinderers of lawlessness and we are to be a thorn in the devil's side yes. until we leave here. Thank you, Jesus. We are supposed to be causing problems, oh, yes. not for God. Not for people, but for the devil and what he wants to do. Yeah. We're called for that purpose. Amen. We're called. I pray for when we, 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 me and Lord, we pray for the children. I pray they're hungry on fire for the things of God. They're going to be concerned their spouses. They're going to meet up with them at just the right age, the right time. And they're going to get married. They're going to live for God all the days of their life. Their hunger and thirst will never be able to be quenched. They're going to do great and mighty things for the kingdom of God. And many souls are going to be one for his kingdom. And they're going to do great and, yeah. great and mighty work against the kingdom of darkness and Satan. And many souls are going to be snatched out of his kingdom right. because of their decision for God. Right. And we pray that every single day. And it's so. You say, well, it might not look like it. Again, that's natural. Anybody can do that. You know, if you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you're already defeated. Right? 
I believe we can do all things God said we can. All things are possible and believe. Many say, why me and, and how me? And I say, why not me? That's what God said. Amen. You go look at Moses who we just read about. He didn't think he could do nothing. He stuttered and all kind of stuff. The Lord said, you open your mouth, I'll give you what to say. Amen. Amen. We're not talking about us. We're talking about defendancy upon God. We have the power through intercessory prayer to see things change that even that may even oppose God at the very moment. Right? Matter of fact, and I wasn't going to say this, I was going to say it in prayer. One of the things we have to do when we pray is understand one of the greatest examples today is of evil is abortion. That is nothing but a demon spirit. Nothing. It's the same thing with homosexuality and lesbianism. Abortion and, and same-sex anything is an act against life that God gave through Jesus. It's all it is. Two men, two women cannot produce a child. They cannot biblically get married. Abortion is murder. It doesn't matter how you put it. But you can holler and scream and do all sorts of things. It is not going to change anything. We know that. We preach that. We're never going to stop. But we have to pray. There are spirits behind these things that have blinded the minds and the eyes of people in their heart to believe these things are right. We have, even in our own city, the many of the problems and the strongholds and the weaknesses, they are not natural bents. They are satanically inspired and we must take authority in the name of Jesus. We must believe that by the Holy Ghost and the preaching of the gospel and as we pray, all of them working in conjunction, that the eyes of those that are blinded, they're going to be those scales, so to speak, will be removed and they'll see the glorious light and the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. They're coming to know Him. We've got to be specific in those things. And we're going to have to get the Holy Ghost involved, obviously, to do that. Why? Because we don't know everything. Romans 8, 24, 25, 26 or so in there, all of them. Amen? Amen. We're about to pray in a minute, y'all. Y'all don't get too, too torqued out. Y'all ready, right? So Jesus, and we could go through these, but Jesus interceded for, for the transgressors as well. And that would be, especially at that time, it's not now. But that was us. All of us. We were all separated from God. Read Romans chapter 8. We'll look at that real quick. I'm going to give you probably one more, and then I'm going to, we're going to pray. I'm not rushing, but I, this prayer tonight, again, we'll, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do, but we're going to, I knew I was going to give you a little more word. Romans chapter 8. Matter of fact, you get in the Spirit, it's hard not to preach. We're not supposed to preach all the time. Sometimes we need to pray. Sometimes we need to teach. Right? Sometimes the gifts of the Holy Ghost would have been operation. Romans 8, uh, verse 34 <clears throat> says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yeah, rather that is risen again, who is even now. This is where God's at. Jesus. God's there as well. Jesus, the right hand of the Father. Who is even at the right hand of God. What's he doing? Who also maketh intercession for us. Remember, interceding, you're not praying for yourself, you're praying for others. Right? Now I want you to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Just, 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 I don't want to use the word gentle, but I'm going to give you general things from the word. Then we get into the spirit. He shows us very often uh, who to pray for specifically. First Timothy chapter two said, "Who would we pray for?" We see First Timothy chapter two, verse one. I exhort, therefore, first of all, supplications, prayers. What's the next word? Intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. We got plenty to pray for already. The first ones we want to intercede for is all men, especially those that are lost, right? And then we would see, again, number two, four kings. And are all in authority. And for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet, peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. So we are going to intercede for all men. We'll intercede for those in authority, right? Especially in our particular country. The world matters. But in our country where we live, we believe God. One of the ways that we pray for is that the leaders that are not seeking God will seek God. Those that, that are uh, maybe closet Christians, you would say. We believe God that a spirit of boldness is going to come upon them. Yeah. And they're going to stand up and speak the truth and stand for what's right, no matter who gets mad about it. No matter who boycotts anything. It's not going to matter, right? And, and that they're going to have the wisdom of God in, in each and every situation, right? And then we're going to turn back to being one nation under God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I told you the other one was the last one. But I want you to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 1. Because we're praying for, for the lost. We want to look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 1. 
So I'm just going to say that this other that I have, and, and you can write it down or get it later. We'll, we're going to come back to it because there's actually something else we're going to do in a, another month or so here <clears throat> that the Lord told me today. I'll tell you later to keep a secret. Yeah. Keep you coming back. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. My manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Verse 4 says this. In whom the God of this world, who's that? That's Satan. The God of this world has done what? This is what's going on right now. Everybody that is not saved. It's never made Jesus Lord of their life. Has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Many know they lack. Many know they're incomplete. Many know they're hurting and broken, but they don't know the answer. They need somebody to pray, and they need somebody to tell them about Jesus. Amen. He's the answer. Which believe not in the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. We were in darkness, and now... Thank God we're in that marvelous light, right? For the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, verse 7. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So the process even of salvation, I'm not going to give you these other scriptures, but we just gave you 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 7. First thing we got to do is we have to intercede on behalf of the lost and pray that their eyes are going to be open. The, the Bible says that the harvest is plenteous. But the laborers are few. We have to say we are those laborers. So we're going to pray for their eyes to be open. Number one. Number two, we're going to preach. We're going to preach, right? Yes, in the church, but even as we go out. Your message is the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to pray. We're going to preach because they're saved by preaching. And then number three, the part that you can't do. You can pray and you can preach. We can preach. But number three out of John 16, 8, the Holy Spirit convicts the sinner. He does that. He can fix the heart. That's why we got to get back to the Word of God. we got a lot of fluff in the church and not a lot of the Holy Ghost. You know some people that's messed up greatly. that slapped full of the devil. You, me, and all of us put together. Can't change them by ourselves. But the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost can knock the devil flat out of them. Yeah. And bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's what we're going to be praying here in just a second to do so. We're going to pray. I just have these wrote down. And again, we don't, in any particular order, do not really care. We're going to be led by the Spirit. And I know you guys understand what we're doing is, is for example, but also for the purpose of, of obeying the Word and praying to bring results. And But it's, it's, in a, it's in a nutshell. You can go home and pray the same way for your family. For your, You need to be praying for your family anyways, for the country. We need to be praying for this city. Don't be found just talking about how messed up and lost and full of the devil everybody is. We need to be praying, right? We can, did Abraham, did God hear Abraham? Yes. 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 Did he hear Moses? Yes. Obviously, we know he heard Jesus. Yes. You think he's going to hear you? Oh, yes. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman makes much power available. When we pray, God hears our prayers. God moves on our behalf. We're going to pray for our country. First, we're going to start from the big and go right on down to the, to the I don't want to call it the small, but local, I guess we could say. We're going to pray for our country. We're going to pray for our county and our city where we have been placed. You know we're here for a reason. Yes. yes. We're not here to fit in. Just to be like everybody else. No. There's an outpouring of God just to be right here with you and me yeah. in this church. And then we're going to pray for your families. You're going to, if you have been, you're going to stop talking about how messed up they are and such. And we're going to start praying for them. Believe that God is working on their behalf. We believe that those that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Holy Ghost is dealing with their hearts. And obviously, whether it's you or me, somebody else, that God is sending somebody, placing them in their path. Because they've got to hear about Jesus. They've got to, they've got to preach for them. Hear about Jesus. And they're going to make that decision to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you've got a spouse that doesn't know Jesus. And you say, well, they won't ever listen to me. Well, be careful saying that because they might listen to you. But even if they wouldn't listen to you, God's got other people that's on the job. Yeah. Let God send somebody else to talk to them if they wouldn't listen to you. And when they get a hold of Jesus, they might start listening to you. And you work together and flow together, right? We've got to get out of doubt and unbelief and get back into faith and back into the Word of God. We're going to go to the country. Then we're going to pray the county and city here. Not just the leaders, but the lost and dying. And wisdom for us as well to attack strongholds and, 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 and things to change in our community, right? 
Yes, and number three, the families. God wants strong families and Satan wants to destroy them. And we're not going to put up with it. Amen. We're called, we're called to be hinders of lawlessness. And I'm just telling you, uh, it's, it's big inside of me, but it's going to get a lot bigger. It is not little old me and little old you and little old RLC. It's big old God. Amen. And anything we can think, no matter how big it is in your capacity, is nothing compared to what God will do if we trust Him. Yes. And it's what we're going to do. Amen. So y'all come on down.